Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's live, I've got some flavor for you. Few questions have been asked about the hybrid system. What's a vector, Tina? What the hell are these colors on your chart all the time? Do you th I'm not used to this kind of flavor. Tonight's live is going to be a bit of a schooling on the vector candles and what you guys need to know about them. We're going to learn about what they are, what they represent, who really moves the candles in the chart. And this is going to help you understand how to read price in the marketplace. All right. Secondly, we're going to dive into the charts. We're going to talk about BTC and why this bad boy hasn't done anything with the potential of some flavor tonight in Asia. We're going to talk about why oil is going to continue to move up with tensions overseas causing a little bit of a problem. Now it's going to start becoming regional and some word on the street about this Chechenian army getting ready to start bringing the flavor in help of the Palestinians. So we're going to check that out very shortly. And I've got a couple of stories for you. Unfortunately, they are escort related but luckily for me i don't partake in that i was in the area when it was happening you see remember i don't pay i charge that's the key difference when it comes to that game i just need to put that out there i've got mad love and respect for escorts but i i don't pay i i charge that's a different life that i've had uh, i've come away from that now you might think i'm joking i'm being serious man you know, it's wealthy women is a hard business to be in. I'm telling you, <laughs> they think I'm joking. So, ladies and gentlemen, before I actually start, I've got a shout out for someone. Someone that's been following me for a little while. And as a little birthday present, I believe his missus reached out and said, Yo, Tino, please give my boyfriend a happy birthday. So, Emil, from my heart, bro. Mad love and respect, and I wish you a happy birthday. Chat, show some love to Emil. Wish him happy birthday and many more to come. All right? Mad love and respect to you. Now let's get with this flavor on the vector candles. So before we dive into the charts, well, what's a vector? There are three definitions of the word vector, okay? We can talk about it in aero aeronautics. Um, biology and mathematics, okay? And quite frankly, it represents movement, energy, from one point to the next, okay? Now, this is very symbolic when it comes to looking at the charts. Now, there are so many variations on how to read the charts, but unless you're rolling with the business model, you ain't going to get nowhere. Simple as. It wouldn't be the first time you've seen a big green vector. And it wouldn't be the first time you've seen a red vector candle. Vector candles are about intention. They're about getting you to understand something sinister is happening from the one minute time frame all the way through to the weekly time frame, monthly time frame, you name it. They are a representation of market maker behavior. Now, we can't dismiss the market maker, and some of you might think I'm batshit crazy when I talk about market makers, but one of the biggest market makers that you all know, Alameda Research, you know what happened to those guys. But they were market makers. They were providing liquidity. Now, market makers' behavior is a little bit tricky. It's very algorithmic. They have the faster end of computers. They can execute high-frequency trades. They're the ones that get the orders filled, fast in, fast out. They work the spreads. Now, if we have an understanding of that, and we then go into the charts, we can see that representation of market maker behavior by the utility of the vector candles. So let's go into the charts and understand exactly how to read price using the vector candles. Okay, then. Cool. Happy birthday, my bro. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right, then. So, vector candles. I've just done a poll, and you guys have not... Yeah, you've selected 171 votes. 36 of you... 36% of you are here for the escort stories. I will be getting to the escort stories. Sit tight. If you are new, wait for it. What I'm about to say to you is going to blow over your head. Rewatch the video. But just wait for the escort stories. 
And Mike Days, 53% you've been here from day one. Mad love to you all. And 11% Vector what? This is for you. What's a Vector candle? Here is a Vector candle right here. This is a representation of market maker behavior. This is a representation of price going up. This is a representation of retail getting trapped. This is a representation of all of the liquidation points being triggered, getting ready to try and make a move to the upside because retail wants to make a million tomorrow. This is a psychological cal um, can candle calendar. Now, this vector candle comes in all shapes and sizes. The bigger the vector candle, the more impressionable the move is. The more the candle is designed to make people believe something. Now, conventional wisdom would say that a big green candlestick represents bullish behavior, but it always ends up coming back down. And these little retraces are profit opportunities when you understand the principle of a vector candle. Okay, so let me bring you back to school. In front of you, we have retail trader. Okay, move this over here. Over here, we have Binance. Over here, we have Market Maker. My guys that have been with me from day one will know this one. Okay. Now, Market Maker, bigger player over here. Binance is the exchange. Retail Trader is right here. Okay. Retail Trader wants to go long on Bitcoin. Cool. He sends his order out to Binance. Binance then pings that order to the Market Maker. Now, the Market Maker can't provide the same order back to him. He doesn't do that. He has to set the same, or well, the order that is opposite this guy's purchase. So when you buy, Market Maker programs the order back with the algorithms to Binance. Binance then make a negotiation fee between the Market Maker and Binance as the liquidity provider. And then it goes back to the retail trader as a purchase, which is really a sell from the Market Maker. He, sold, he sold into the retail trader who brought. Okay? Likewise, if it's going to be a sell and you want to sell short on Bitcoin, goes over to Binance. The only person that is buying is Mr. Market Maker, okay? Gets that order, pings it back to Binance. Binance then pings it back to you. You now have a short position on Bitcoin, okay? Now, when you go long, you have margins down here. Behind these margins down at the lows, where your liquidation point is, Mr. Market Maker, with the use of his algorithm, has triggered a buy order to trigger your sell, which is your liquidation when you are in a long. Likewise, when you are in a short, your liquidation point is above price. The higher price goes, or wherever your liquidation is above your short, that's where you lose your position, okay? Now, what is triggered when the sell order is triggered? A buy. So market maker buys at that point, okay? Now, what you've got to understand is when you've done all of this, depending on the position you've taken, the buys that are done here, sorry, the, 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 the buy orders right here and the sell orders down here, they've been created in the past. And this is where the vector candle comes into play. So let's just take Bitcoin on the one hour time frame. Retail traders go short. That's with this candlestick right here, the red vector another red vector, and then you can see there are all these red vector candles. These red vector candles represent the selling that is happening in any chosen asset. That means psychologically, retail trader thinks prices are going down. They've been given a reason to believe that's the case. So price drops, okay? And then market makers start speeding up the process and traps traders at the lowest point right here. And then all of these retail traders that are short have margins triggered inside of these zones. So when those margins are triggered, market maker is right there buying back or closing off his longs that he's been building all the way down. Now, if I've lost you there, let me simplify it for you. Whenever we see a red vector candle, it means that market maker is buying. Why? Because retail is selling. Whenever we see a green vector candle, it means market maker is selling as prices are going up whilst retail traders are buying. But I might throw you off here. 
Market Maker is also selling as it's going up for a profit and building his short at the same time. They can do that. They just open and close positions systematically, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's what it's like, literally like this, okay? Tick chart. Imagine looking at a tick chart and it's going up and down, electrocardiogram, up, down, up, down. That's exactly how Market Maker works. They work the spread, okay? Now, the key thing with Vector Candles is they teach you how and what the Market Maker's doing. Now, the phenomenon behind the vector candles is they always end up coming back into the vector candles. So if you are new, go back and look at the biggest vector candles that you can identify in the charts. That'll be one right here. They come back into it. And then they end up moving from that point. If we just remove this arrow and zoom in, look at the precision before it decides to make the move up again. Here it is. Green vector candle wick. Well, let's go down to the wick itself, okay? Look at that. Drop. Up it goes. Down it goes. And then comes back up again. Okay? Because that's where they started the trap. When I'm looking at the charts and I see a big green vector candle, I don't get excited. I'm like, oh, man, someone's going to get paid. Someone's going someone's gonna to lose. I get excited after a big move up when I see red vector candles like this that are leaving gaps at the, at the top side of the chart to represent where they could end up going later on, okay? Funnily enough, they come back to that zone. Let me show you another asset that tends to do this quite frequently. One of the trade setups that I sent out this morning for the Platinum members, dollar dominance. When you understand the vector candles on dollar dominance, you kind of have an opportunity to exploit assets against the dollar. So in this morning's update, I said, look, I'm expecting dollar to come up and hit the 106.169 zone. Look at the red vector candle region right there. They're leaving a gap behind. I just showed you one example of Bitcoin. And then they ended up coming back into it. Funny, it was in hindsight. It's easy for me to say. But this was in the past. Okay. I expected dollar to come up, which suggested to me that euro was going to go down. We go and have a look at dollar. Dollar. Go have a look at dollar. The 106. 106, 169 was our projection. We ended up getting 106, 277. Look left. What did they take? The vector candles. Now, the vector candles, when it comes to dollar, is a little bit different when you're looking at assets against the US dollar. The dollar is deemed as a safe haven in principle, right? If investors are scared about something, they're probably going to favor cash as a position. So the more they're transacting, selling other assets back into dollar, the value of the dollar in principle is being transacted on, okay? It's being held, all right? So naturally, it's going to go up. So dollar has appreciated, okay? That was the recovery of the red vector candle, all right? We take that logic and go and have a look at euro by that principle of the vector candle. Go down into euro, and we had suggested today that euro was going to come down, hit target one psychological high, and make its way towards target two, okay? Now, we achieved the target on the basis of the dollar dominance going down, going up, sorry. And you can see target one was taken and then we went further down towards the 105.227 zone, but we didn't quite clear target two just yet. So we still got a little bit more flavor for the Euro to come into play, all right? Now, here is another example of the vector candles. Check this out, all right? Today, I did a projection on the S&P straight after the live. Now, after the live, I was discussing that the S&P is going to initiate a stop run and aim towards the 4,350 zone, okay? At the same time, we spoke about the NASDAQ doing exactly the same thing where we were looking for the weekly low, which happens to sit at the 15,050 zone, okay? Now, through all of this, this was the NASDAQ and the S&P 
going back into vectors and I'm going to justify all of this. All right. So we go back into the S&P itself. Have a look at that bad boy. S&P come down and cleared the 4,331. They smashed that expectation of 4,350. And then, of course, the NASDAQ came down, hit our target of 15,062 and some more. But then look left. You can see it's gone back into the vector candle recovery on the left over here on the, bl on the blue vector. And then, of course, back into this, we go down and you can see there was our projection from this morning. But look. The green vector candle was present on the, on the NASDAQ, okay? Now, when it comes to understanding the vector candles, okay, you then got to say to yourself, okay, Tino, yeah, fine, all right, then. So they vector candles recover themselves and what have you, all right? So what is it that we need to take into consideration when we are actually looking at vector candles? You have to look at what's going on in the marketplace. And this is something, this is one big tip that I'm going to give you guys when it comes to using the vector candles. If you're not aware of what's going on in the marketplace, it's going to be harder for you to project towards a vector candle zone if the direction of the market is not favoring that direction. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Go back into the dollar. I've got red vector candles that were right here. Okay, and the marketplace stabilized. I already know that the yields are just going up and the bonds are taking a shoe bag to the downside. So I've already got my tone set. I know what's going on in the marketplace. The psychology of what's going on. You've got war, ladies and gentlemen, man. Look, this is a problem. This impacts the reason why people buy and sell. This is the reason why oil is going to make a move up. Okay, inside of this, we projected oil today to start making a flavorsome move. Where was the oil move? Here we go, oil. We had a couple of zones for oil. We wanted to take out the $89.03 $89 mark. We came in and we only managed to achieve the $88.58 mark. But trust me, oil's going up. It only makes sense because of what's going on, unless they stop this war in Israel. And if they're worried about it escalating, the chances of it stopping it ain't going to be happening anytime soon. Too much money is being made off of the back of it. And that's the that's the messed up truth about it, ladies and gentlemen. OK. So when it comes to vector candles, you've now got an idea about why the distance of the vector candle is important and the marketplace in justifying how likely it's going to get to that vector. Don't pick a vector candle, for example, on Bitcoin and say, right, on the 10 hour time frame, I'm looking at Bitcoin to move up towards the 31,185 zone. Given that Bitcoin is at 28,259, there is a possibility because it's sort of close. OK, then we look left in the chart and we've got a red vector candle all the way up here that says 56,041. How likely in your trading day is Bitcoin going to go up to 56,000? Very unlikely unless the US makes Bitcoin legal tender. Unless we get something crazy like this going mad on Bitcoin and it's just being a consumed left, right and center. Welcome to Fiat Leak, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I saw an article going in today saying that the UK itself is now top crypto activity in Central, Northern and Western Europe chain analysis says so. <laughs> I don't really see UK buying much cryptocurrency. You know, you can talk about activity, but if it's because people are selling their crypto to the United States, then that's a different story. But you can see where the crypto is going. It's all heading to the United States. All right. And that's the key thing about crypto. Okay. Now, with that being said, Looking at the bigger picture of things is going to help you justify why price will go towards a specific vector. Now, when we look at the vector candles on the smaller time frames, we can now say to ourselves, OK, then what can we expect from Bitcoin today? Well, what did we want to happen today on Bitcoin? Well, it was quite an interesting thing today because we wanted them to test the VWAP. OK, and if we zoom out, we kind of got the V. Well, we didn't actually get to test the VWAP. All right. But they made their way to it to only move away from it. OK, and now we're looking at the chart. We can then see now, OK, what have we got going down below? Now, this is where the vector candle story comes into play. Here we are. 
down below, we've got lots of liquidity down here that is prepared to buy Bitcoin. All right. Now, what's down here? Mm, 27,700. We've got 1,107 Bitcoin orders inside of this range as a limit order waiting to be filled. Okay. All right, then. Now, here's the story with the Vector Candle. What have I got going on here? How likely, between me and you now, guys, right? Based on the understanding of the Vector Candle, all right? When you see a Vector Candle close by, how likely do you think Bitcoin is going to come to this point. In my opinion, I believe it will go down to this point. Why? Because it's the next point of interest where there was a psychological impact on the marketplace. When you see a green vector candle like this with no recovery, and what do I mean by recovery? You really want to see a vector candle get recovered at least 50% of it, okay? Now you can see that we have got this vector candle nearly recovered 50% of it and then came back up. Now, the story behind the recovery of a vector candle suggests that this candlestick wasn't a vector in the first place. It became a vector candle. And as you progress in your trading journey, the more you watch the charts, the more likely you're going to anticipate a vector. Now, the one thing, I'm going to give you this, and I've said it before, the one thing that will help you understand how a candlestick is going to give you the idea that activity is happening inside of it. Because you guys, when you look at the vector candle, you don't know nothing about what's going on inside of that candlestick. Okay? Check this out. So this is exocharts, right? This is what's going on inside of a candlestick with the exocharts. Okay? As we projected, range weekly low come into play. Where was it? Previous day's low. Yeah, it came and took it and they've reset it now because of a new session. Okay? But that's where it was. But inside of here is the makeup of a vector candle. Now, when we look at a vector candle, we don't see that, but we understand that there's going to be imbalances. What's an imbalance? This is an imbalance when you've got 6 and 27, okay? Between 250 and 300%, and you read price like in diagonal, so 6, 27, okay? That's an imbalance. Now, a vector candle is where you've got lots of these imbalances happening. What causes the imbalance? Market maker fulfilling the obligation to the retail trader by making him think prices are rising. Retail trader comes in. Remember when I said that a vector candle isn't a vector candle until it becomes one. It becomes one. So the one thing that I was going to say to you was the speed of the candle is going to give you the heads up on if you are witnessing market maker stepping in. And when I say speed, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Go back to Monday's live stream when we wanted the 28,500. Look at how fast the candlestick was moving. That gives you a clue that that's where Market Maker is stepping in. When he's stepping in, you know retail's stepping in. That's when you pay attention. You don't do what retail does. Granted, you can take advantage of momentum plays. Don't get it twisted, okay? You can take advantage of momentum. But the general consensus says that most retail traders are buying as it's going higher and higher and they need more of a conviction to buy as prices are moving up, okay? Here is another example for you. Check this out, all right? Shared the projection today on gold, all right? Straight after the New York Live. What do we have here? We've got green vector candles coming into play. Buy, buy, buy. Yeah, because that's what retail's looking at. Retail's looking at this saying, look, buy because this is what is happening. It's going up, okay? Now, with that being said, I anticipated that in the video that I shared. I said, I want the 1965. Wait for that bad boy to come into play, and then we'll be looking for shorts. But I warned the guys and said, be careful with gold because it has the tendency to be a bit tricky. 1965, reversal to the downside. One key thing that we've been talking about throughout the week is the range daily low, range daily high. Gold was very extended above that range. So we naturally expected a reversal in gold. 
Okay. We go back into the dearly beloved gold. And what do we have going off here? Happy days. We got 1,965.069. Okay. And then they initiated the reversal from that point on the green vector candle that appeared at the highest point, And then they reversed it. This is where retail gets squashed. And the vector candles give you the clue as to what they are going to do next. Imagine if you witnessed this red vector candle before the hour was up, before the hour was up, okay? You would have witnessed this red vector candle and you would have said to yourself, I would expect based on the strength of what's going on in gold and investors are seeking the hedge in gold because war is going on, okay? But it's too late for that now. This hedge has been done from before. This was gold's hedge. Hedge fund managers were loading up on gold. Just as we hear about the war in Israel, well, funnily enough, gold takes a mass, massive move to the upside. But looking at this red vector candle, you would have anticipated them to try and come back up into that zone. You would have gone into the smaller time frames and you would have said to yourself, okay then, how can I premeditate this move back up in gold? Okay. Up, go short comes back down, and then it brings it back up again. Look, stopping volume candle right there. Failure to break completely below the 50 EMA. And then from that point, makes the move back up and recovers the red vector candle on the smaller time frames. And then, of course, it finishes at that point. Okay? There's your V-shaped play. All right? Because gold gave us the clue as to what they were going to do. Again, the vector candles are all about the clues that they're going to do something later on. Now, when you see vector candles, it's just not simple just to say, yeah, the vector candle appears above the 50 and what have you. There are a number of things that come into play with it. But the best practice for you is to go back in the charts and find the biggest vector candle that you can see. Not no nine inch wick, bro. I'm talking about a full vector candle. Highlight its presence. Then look at what happens afterwards. You will find that the vector candle that happens from the lowest point usually ends up sending price higher. The vector candle that appears at the highest point is usually the climatic candle, which sets up the trap to bring it down. You saw what happened to gold. Okay. Notice when Bitcoin made the run up to 30K, the vector candle had appeared beforehand. Let's go back into it. Go back into Bitcoin. What did they do first? Look, and this is on the five minute time frame. You could see the collection of vectors appearing here. We go into the one hour time frame. Go back. So when Bitcoin did that nice flavorsome move up, where is it? Here we go. Look at the difference. You got vector candle right here, shift out, another one from the lowest point, getting ready to take out the high. Look left, vector candle. Okay. Are we good chat? Are we all on the same page? Yes? No? You came for the escort story. All right, then before we get to the escort story, here we go. If you are new, go to tradersreality.com. There are two courses, one paid, one free. Go do the free one. The free one's going to give you the breaking down of the hybrid system to get you to understand the hybrid system. Everything you need to know about it. The scalping course is designed to help you understand how to use the vector candles to scalp. And I'm talking about different ways of reading the vector candles. Okay? It would take me four hours to tell you. There's a course right there to do it for you in four hours. I'm adding to this course soon as well on advanced vector candles. So make sure anyone that does have that, be alert on that notification when you do get the update in that course, okay? But if you are new, start here. Get breaking down the hybrid system. One hour and 10 minutes. You've spent, how long is this live? 28 minutes listening to me talking about the hybrid system, okay? Another 30 minutes or so, you'll have a good understanding of what the hybrid system is. Tradersreality.com escorts. Now, I'm going to give you this story. Back in the day, I went to Prague with a couple of friends. It was actually six of us. We wanted to go to Prague. I was like, okay, cool. Let's go to Prague. I'm always going Cyprus. So Prague was a little bit of a different thing for me. It's too cold, man. Don't want to be going Prague. Anyway, they talked me into it and we ended up getting in this, this room, this, this house, right, where there were six rooms. Okay. Cool. So 
boys being the boys, you know, we cracked a few drinks and what have you. But Prague was a shifty place. Anyways, we go downstairs and we're looking around right now and we can see the main square. You've got McDonald's in the corner, people running in and out. And it looked like a kind of a nice place to be. It was, it was awesome. I actually enjoyed it. It was cold, man. Didn't really, really like the cold. Don't really like the heat. But anyways... My friend come up to me and he goes, yo, 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 there's, there's, there's a escort bar down the road. I was like, so what are you telling me for, bro? He goes, let's go check it out. I was like, okay, let's go. Let's, I don't want to be the spoil sport right now. You know, you know my opinion on that bad boy. I don't pay, I charge. That's the story. So we're making our way down to this brothel, okay? Now, it was a shifty place from day one. You had to go downstairs like this. This was where the public pathway was. We had to go down. I didn't like this, okay? Had those cheap neon lights where one was broken. It didn't even finish the word. And because we were in Prague, it wasn't even spelling the right word anyway. It didn't even look like it was a word. We go in and we had to knock. But what's this place, man? I could be a potential customer. Why on earth am I knocking? This door should be open for me straight away. Well, the doors were like revolving doors. You, you had to knock and push for some reason. I don't even know why. Anyway, we walked in, right? And I see this shit house guy whose head was the size of my chest looking me up and down. And I'm like, well, what do I say to this guy? Can I come in? He just looked at me and then he just guided me in. I thought, okay, so we've got the approval now. So we walk in, and six of us now. We walk in, it's pitch black. We've got those neon crude ass lights. No thanks. I already wasn't liking what I was seeing. I was like, where's the exit? I just come from it. So my exit plan was going through my mind thinking, what if I get fucked up right now? And what if this guy tries to swipe me for cash? I can't, I can't be spending money here. I can't give him the impression that I can spend money in here. So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep my defenses about myself. I ain't drinking anything. Some little woman walks up to me and goes, here you go. I was like, what's that? Orange juice? I was like, okay, cool. I'll go and buy my orange juice. I don't know what's in that, that drink. I was like, it's okay, I'll go to the bar. I'm like, can I have a sparkling water, please? I got the dirtiest frown. Like, the baddest frown from the bar lady. Just looking at me like... Anyway, the boys were just doing their own thing. Like, my friend, he was just in the corner and he had this woman dancing all over him and what have you. They were loving life. I was feeling agitated, man. I didn't like it, man. Survival instincts were coming into play at this point because I was like, the only exit is being guarded by this guy who's got a head bigger than my chest. Looks like he eats pigs for snacks. I don't know what I'm going to do here. So I'm getting aggravated. I'm like, bro, just go and finish what you need to do with this woman. Let's get the fuck out of here. Anyway, I get my sparkling water, all right? I look in the corner. There was this woman sat in between two bouncers. Now, remember, we got the guy who looks like a fucking beast. Now, this woman looked like she had two dragons next to her. Big men. Like, these guys were tanks. And she was sat there dressed in white, with her legs crossed, looking like... She ran the show. I looked across, I was like, hmm, I'm not down with the escort game, but I'd like to know what that is. I really want to know why she sat in the corner right now. I turned to the bar lady and I was like, lady in white, I had to speak like some backwards person because I couldn't, you know, I was, I'm a foreigner in that country. One word. <laughs> she goes, expensive I went, what? Expensive. I was like, okay. How much? Her eyes lit up. And then they dropped. Because she then realized that I just brought a sparkling water. I didn't buy champagne. So I wasn't exactly the clientele that was going to go and spend 25 grand on a woman sat between two beasty looking guys. Think about it. How intimidating would it be to go up and be like, I'd like to spend an evening with her. And you've got these two 
monsters sat next to her. What are they going to be doing? They're her bodyguards, apparently. And apparently it's that good. You got to pay 25K for it. I mean, bro, like, come on. 25 racks. And I sat there and I started to speak to them. I was like, 25,000? And I was like getting into the flavor of haggling with this woman. I said, what's the cheapest price? And she instantly said, you pay yes or no? I said, fuck this. I called all the boys. I said, get out of here, man. Let's get out of it. I'm not having this. No chance. No chance. I start walking out. And then they all started following me because I was losing my shit at this point. All right. The, the bouncer at the door was like looking at me ready to explode anyway. And remember, he's got the head the size of my chest. And I thought back then I was I was a stocky lad. I was sitting nearly at 17 stone. I was a wedge guy. You would say my name and I would turn with my shoulders, not my neck. I was pretty wedged back then. We end up going to the top. We came from the underground. All right. And we started talking. I was like, what happened in there? What did you get? What did you pay? What did you do? And all of that stuff. I said, let's get out of here, man. This is pissing me off, man. We were going to get swiped by these guys. I felt like I was obligated to pay more money. And I asked her about that woman in the corner. And I said, she told me it was 25 grand. And I frowned at her and I tried to haggle and they weren't having any of it. And they realized that I wasn't going to spend a penny because I brought sparkling water. Straight after that, guys, we're making our way back towards the hotel. My friend tapped me on the back and goes, yo, 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 T, wait here. I says, why? He says, I'm just going to go somewhere. I said, bruv, please, I just want to go back to the hotel. All right. I've already come from the underground. OK, where my, I felt like my life was being threatened. OK, I got approached with this glass of orange juice that I thought was spiked. I don't want emotions anymore in this day. Let's go home. He goes, no, 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 T, 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 wait, wait, wait. I says, where are you going? All right. To the right, he goes, I, I've, I've, I've got this girl. I said, what do you mean you've got this girl, bro? Because I'm just going to go back to hers and, you know, it's, what are you going back to hers for? Well, she, you know, just going to, I'm going to have sex with her. I was like, oh. give me your wallet, I said to him. He goes, why? Just give me your wallet, bro. Because you ain't on that survival thinking, are you? No. We are in Prague. We don't know where we are. We know no one in here. And you're just going to go off with some random bird back to hers, have a little bit as your father, and then come back. He goes, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, you're stupid, bro. Give me your wallet. I said, what money do you need? He goes, well, 50. All right, 50. Okay, here we go. Give him the 50. Happy days. He walks off. Now, I'm stood outside, right? There's this coffee bar. OK, and that's when I started drinking coffee aggressively. And that's when my addiction to coffee started because I was waiting there. OK, waiting for my friend to come back. OK, and I was getting aggravated because he's the kind of guy that will stir up shit and create diarrhea. He's that guy. And I felt like I was looking out for him. I just wanted to let him go and do his thing. Within 20 minutes, he comes back. He's huffing and he's puffing. And I'm there with my coffee and my smoke. It was like quarter past two in the morning. I'm just sat there. I'm like, do you have fun, mate? He's like, no, 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 let's go, 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 go. I said, whoa, 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 before we go, 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 what happened? He said, I got knife point. I said, come again, bro. You got, you got held at knife point. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Well, I went upstairs and the girl took me upstairs to her room. And then as I opened the door, this guy came out of nowhere with a knife to my throat and said, give me the money. And oh, I shit myself. And I gave him the cash and he slammed the door in my face and I just ran. I said, bro, what, do you know what? What if you had your wallet? You'd be staying here, my bro. <laughs> you'd be sitting in this country and you'll be going with those two dragons sweeping up and being the lady that gives out the orange juice so you can get yourself a passport to get back home. <laughs> you messed up there and I told you. I gave him the third degree. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in tomorrow for more escort stories. Mad love and respect. Peace.